Last tidbit on muscles is just to do a little comparison between um, skeletal muscle and smooth muscle. I'm not going to do cardiac muscle right now because we will actually do that when we do the cardiovascular system, but just a little bit about smooth muscle comparatively. <clears throat> First off, called smooth muscle because it's not striated, whereas skeletal and cardiac are, of course. And it's not controlled by the somatic nervous system, it's controlled by the autonomic nervous system, which means it's involuntary. It does contain actin and myosin inside, but since it doesn't line up the way that it does in skeletal and cardiac muscle, um, the thin filaments and the thick filaments go at different angles, which means you don't get the striations. Even though the cross bridge cycling is similar, still myosin heads form cross bridge, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so the cells are much smaller, comparatively shorter, um, spindle shaped or eyeball shaped, um, uninucleated cells. In addition, um, I told you that th this was amitotic in adulthood. Most smooth muscle can still go through mitosis in adulthood. So um, the cell division is usually motivated by like paracrine agents that are released upon injury. Um, smooth muscle comparatively has much slower contractions. The cross bridge cycling is slower, not really in a hurry, but that means it also uses less energy. In addition, the calcium pumps on the SR that put the calcium back in after contraction um, are uh, slower as well. So when calcium is released, it stays around for a lot longer, so you don't have to store as much of it. The strength of contraction of smooth muscle compared to skeletal muscle is similar, but smooth muscle is really good at maintaining contractions over long periods of time. One of the big differences between smooth and skeletal muscle is that uh, under normal circumstances, the only reason skeletal muscle should contract is because your somatic nervous system tells it to. <clears throat> With smooth muscle, there are multiple reasons that it could contract. First of all, um, smooth muscle cells, some kinds of them, have spontaneous electrical activity. It like spontaneously depolarizes to threshold, has an action potential and a contraction, and then does the whole thing over again. So this is like the spontaneous um, f minus 50 is the threshold for um, some smooth muscle cells. Hits threshold, has an action potential, hits threshold, has an action potential, um, and just does this over and over again. So a slow depolarization, slow repolarization, slow depolarization, slow repolarization. These are called pacemaker cells that do it, and uh, cardiac muscle does something similar. So first reason it can contract spontaneous electrical activity. Second reason it can contract is that the nervous system tells it to. Um, now, the nervous system synapses and the synaptic terminals actually don't look the same as they do in skeletal muscle, but this is where the neurotransmitters are stored. So um, basically it could contract because the nervous system told it to. Um, the other thing is that all that autonomic nervous system, remember, could tell smooth muscle to um, contract or it could tell it to relax, depending on which branch of the autonomic nervous system you're talking about and where the smooth muscle is. So um, the other reason that smooth muscle can contract, spontaneous nervous system, hormones. Hormones can tell smooth muscle to contract. For instance, like changing um, uh, progesterone levels can tell the uterus to contract, for instance. Um, and then paracrine chemicals can also tell the smooth muscle to contract. Um, and then stretch, like your, st your digestive tract will actually start to have smooth muscle contraction just because it's full, like after Thanksgiving. Okay, and now there are actually two different types of smooth muscle. Um, the smooth muscle that has the gap junctions like you're seeing here, you don't need to tell every cell what to do because they will actually tell each other. This is called visceral or single unit smooth muscle and you find it in your viscera, like in your guts, stomach, intestines, bladder, uterus. And since they are all connected, they tend to behave like a single unit. And this is the one that you usually hear about with smooth muscle. Spontaneous depolarization, affected by hormones, has gap junctions, action potentials move pretty slowly, and causes like peristaltic waves in the digestive tract. It's usually sensitive to stretch, like in the digestive tract. And it's pretty good at contracting even when it's maximally stretched stretch it to two to eight times its um, length 
and it will contract still really well. That skeletal muscle doesn't do that. So it's ideal for hollow organs. Um, and then the other kind that most of the time people don't talk about very much is multi-unit smooth muscle. So please look at the difference here. This one has just some cells that are actually receiving commands from the nervous system and then the um, gap junctions between the cells. This has every single cell receiving a command from the nervous system. So this is called multi-unit smooth muscle because they behave like individual units and not like a single unit like the other one. Each cell has its own innervation from the autonomic nervous system. The impulse doesn't spread from cell to cell. And you use you have this muscle in places where you want tiny little changes to smooth muscle, like the um, smooth muscle that controls pupil dilation and constriction, the erector pili muscles of the skin, the smooth muscle in the walls of your arteries that causes um, arterial constriction and arterial dilation. So this is smooth muscle. And that's it for muscle.